What is going on guys? Zed here, how are you all doing today? Hopefully everything's going fantastically amazing, as always, on a... Wait, I think today's Tuesday. Is today Tuesday? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, I promised, now we're going to deliver. And I say we because, of course, my expert cameraman has generally decided to turn up this time. And he's medicated. So yeah, prepare for some absolute madness. <laughs> Yeah, basically we're going to be doing an in-depth guide to my amazing little gaming pro board. I did a short version yesterday. Make sure, of course, you guys did check out that primarily before watching this because, of course, that was the short version. This is going to be the longer version. So if you guys like short videos, fuck off now. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to start with the general overlay of the board from my understanding as it is. I have read over the manual, I have read over a few things and everything else to do with this board. Uh, voila. We basically have got the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon X370. This is of course an AM4 socket chipset, which is basically compatible with lovely Ryzen processors for the win. That's the 7 and the 5, theoretically, because of course the 5 hasn't been released so any information is kind of sketchy just now but lots and lots and lots of features on here ranging from steel armor braced plates oh yes by the way Mr. Knifey has to make the appearance as always steel armor reinforced DDR4 slots up there to reduce electromagnetic interference from other components on the board we have got PCIe lanes which of course have again got steel armor as well we have got VR boost, we've got audio boost, we've got gold Japanese capacitors for your audio. So basically, if you guys um, are playing like a, a top title, let's say Black Ops and killing a load of zombies, you can hear the zombies much, much clearer. They can scream in your ear and make your blood kind of wanna. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving further onward from that, we have got, of course, our two X16 lanes here. We have also got a third, which is an X8 lane, which basically means that you can have a triple way crossfire. You can have a triple way SLI, but of course, with this lane down here being the slowest lane, it's not really advisable. Stick to two if you guys don't have like tons of hundreds of thousands of dollars, pounds, whatever, rupees maybe. I don't know. But yeah, also got the normal PCIe lanes for your expandable like USB brackets and everything else from there lovely little um, load of system van headers you've got RGB headers as well power LEDs demo thing uh, USB 3 on the front which I've not actually seen before which is kind of unusual normally they're up to the side over by the um, the 24 pin power cable but yeah anyway what I want to do, guys, is I'm going to take a little zoom in of the top of the board and we're going to have a little look at what kind of features are up there. Right, so we'll keep it recording, maybe we can cut this. So where do you want to go exactly? Just up around here. Just there. Yeah. Or like that, or what section exactly? Just up around this part. There's this. So how's that? I'll try to swivel this way a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Does that look blurry or? I was thinking it's a bit out of focus, mate, yeah. How about that? Yeah. Cool. So we've got a good bit in there we can cut. Cut, cut. So, basically what, the, what we've got here is, of course, we have got our pump fan header, primarily for water support or even if you're doing a custom water loop or anything else. Also, We've got our CPU fan header, which is up here as well. Now, here's a quick question for you guys, right? I have a Corsa H115. See previous unboxings. Where would I plug this in? Would I use the CPU fan header, as it is primarily a CPU-powered cooler, or a CPU cooler, or, as per MSI's website, use the PCI, or even the, the PCI... <laughs> The pump fan header, because I've only got one port 
to use and I'm not entirely too sure. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below. Feel free to use um, colourful language if you so wish to. I'm, I'm generally not really bothered nor offended. But yeah, we have got our phase power adapters up here as well. You can see from the MOSFETs and of course the capacitors there. That is basically going to power the VRM side, so that is necessarily dedicated towards the DDR4 boost, hence the steel armor reinforcements, to eliminate electromagnetic interference. Ugh, a lot of friggin' long, long, long words there, guys. AM4 bracket. Fantastic. Looking forward to using this, seeing what it's all got and everything else. Quick question. Why is there a racing flag? <laughs> Also, correct configurations, guys, I need to make this abundantly clear. If you are using two sticks of RAM, you must make sure to read the motherboard manual before just shoving them in anywhere. There are certain YouTubers which released a video not so long ago in which they didn't have a clue where to place the RAM. I'm not going to mention any names, but this guy is an utter tit. Basically... <laughs> You would, at first, use this one and this one. Why? Oh, it's just how the mother mother motherboard manufacturers make it. But, yeah, these two need to be populated first if you're only using two DIMMs. So, basically, as well, it does show you within the manual and it is actually printed on the board. Right there. Uh, just in focus, that's fine. <laughs> also, we have got this and may require some zoom, but I generally think we should be absolutely golden. So, over here, we actually have an easy debug LED, or LEDs, shall we say. So anyway, that's, um, that's your easy debug thing over there, and that will light up with whatever features and everything else. We have also got our 24-pin power adapter, which of course comes off of your motherboard mains, as it is. 12 volt single rail, etc, etc, etc. Tile it up to yourself. Got another little chassis fan just down here, as well. Is it here? Yeah. Mate, we're in focus. We're in focus, good. Mm -hmm. We've also got a USB 3.1 port right there which generically can handle, I think it's up to about 10 gigabits per second, which, yeah, that's a lot of porn. <laughs> per second, per second, which, wow. Also, the little square black boxes things with the barcode that you can see, those are your Two four port SATAs, so that is your SATA 1, 2, and 5 and 6. You've also got your, I still don't know what this is, I think that this is your PWM, but it lights up. <laughs> so, we have got a few things here which are, or even which did generally throw me last time. So, first things first. We do, of course, have our USB 2.0 here and here. We've got capacitors as well, which my good friend, Mr. Jam Forever, did point out a very good point. These capacitors do not seem to have any crosses on the top of them to allow them to go pop and explode. Or not explode, I don't know. He, he knows what he's talking about. In, in my defence, it could be a new manufacturing thing, I don't know, I've always noticed them to have the cross on the top, but feel free to correct me because I'm slightly outdated on this stuff now, so... Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's generally what, um, what he did notice, and he's got a fair few insights into, necessarily speaking of motherboards and everything else, he does computer stuff, like myself, but yeah. Also, we have got, um, believe it or not, this right here is our front panel connector. I know, you're thinking, right, where, where's the graph? I think the graph is just over there somewhere for that, but I'm not entirely too sure. So that's going to house, of course, your, um, I think your audio is going to go over here. 
your power set resets and everything else will go here and of course you've got your power LED here you've got a demo LED as well which you press it and obviously flashy light things go on and stuff like that you've also got a system fan header down here as well and your RGB now the RGB is there primarily for like extra strips and everything else that you actually have on your board it's there and it's also syncable with a program that MSI have invented called Mystic Light. Now, this is pretty awesome. It has 17 different modes, ranging from lightning to pulsing to Friday night to mob I mean, um, to um, <laughs> to breathing and everything else. It really is phenomenal. So, definitely. Definitely go check that out. There's a little um, thing that you can play with on the MSI website, of course, as well, which you can test out these and see what I mean by that. But this header here allows for expandability for, of course, LED strips to come off and decorate your case and sync in the same time as the board. The other cool thing about specifically the LEDs, or even they are RGB lighting, shall we say, is you can sync it from your mobile. Yes, you can sync your motherboard lighting, you can pick your colours, customise them and update them from the phone. From your phone, in your hand, if you're at work or something. I think that's absolutely phenomenal. Generally, that's just so friggin' awesome. What do you think, Jim? Very nice touch, very nice touch. He's not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I am very much bothered. Anyway. Moving slightly on, we do have, of course, our other PCIe site. I believe that we have already covered this. But we do have a secondary M.2. So, M.2, yeah, I'm not going to give information on it because I don't know very much about it. I just know that you plug it in, it's fast as hell. And An expensive as shit. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but yeah, you do have two bays for that covered on this board. We now have, of course, a little LED strip which goes down here, around over to the audio boost, and then down to the very, very bottom of the board. We've got our Japanese golden capacitors. I have also mentioned that, which is all good, which make the sound experience coming through your ears and everything else absolutely phenomenal. Moving up slightly, I think, to kind of the topish region of the board. So, of course, this GDS board actually does incorporate a load more features as well. As I say, this is generally an in-depth run over of what the features on the board actually are. As you can see necessarily over here, we do actually have a VR boost, which would necessarily tie in with the rear I.O. panel. See our previous video for that. And, of course, another system fan header over there, which is always a good thing to have. The more fan headers you have, meaning the more fans. I mean, I've got what? Three, six, seven fans, I think it is. No. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, six fans. Six fans I have on this just now, and I'll probably be struggling on where to place them. That's why I think they're buying a separate fan header. So if you guys know any um, any decent like, fan combo header things that you know of, then yeah, that's, that's fantastic. So everything is cooled necessarily up towards the top of the board up here by these absolutely gorgeous coated carbon fiber cooler things which is the, the, this is the technical terminology for it along with the MOSFETs and and the capacitors and everything else as you can see full HDMI certified and of course at the very very top of the board of course do have your 8 pin power connector just up here as well and that pretty much is really just about it I mean there's a whole load of features the AM4 socket mounts unfortunately are not the same as on the uh, Asus Crossfire board. They can't be AM3 and AM4. Unfortunately, I wish they could, because then I wouldn't have to wait from a part from America, so that then I can use my bloody system. But anyway, that's not the point here. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this a little bit of an in-depth guide into the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon DDR4 X370 AM4 and a partridge in a pear tree motherboard. Yes, it pretty much does it all. Future expandability, future proof. Well, for the next few years anyway, so. Yep, 
pretty good. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, Zed out.